Hello and welcome to Social Thread Podcast. I am Robert Payne and I am joined by Rob Reinders. And Social Thread is a nonprofit where you can be a part of a community where you uh, can belong, you can thrive, and you can explore your faith on your own terms. And today we're just continuing along our Social Thread pillars, kind of what makes Social Thread Social Thread. And today is a biggie is um, when Jesus says, love your neighbor. So Rob, what does that mean to love your neighbor? Yeah, so that, that, that can sound, sound kind, of, kind of intense, sound kind of hard. Does it mean, do I run next door and give my neighbor a hug? You can, you can if you want to, but um, you know, that's, that's kind of the surface level of what I think Jesus w- was getting at. And in um, the book of Luke, he tells this story in the Bible uh, about um, when we're thinking about neighbors and, and who our neighbor is, somebody actually gets up and asks him and says, hey, teacher, uh, you know, who is my neighbor? And um, he says, he, he tells this story as he often did when he would respond uh, to people instead of just giving them a straightforward an- answer, he would illustrate it. And he tells the story of this guy who's walking down the road and he gets beaten and he gets robbed and he's basically left in a ditch. And there's like all these good people or who we would say are good people in society that, that walk by and just sort of turn a blind eye. They're like, Oh, I'm too, I'm too busy. I can't, I can't help this guy. I don't want to help this guy. Um, you know, including um, I, you know, there's a priest who, who walks by and be like an equivalent of, you know, a pastor, you know, see somebody, hurt lying on the side of the road and says like, ah, I got to get to my church meeting. I can't help this guy. Bummer. Um, and, and walks on by, but then there's a third guy who walks by, um, who Jesus calls a Samaritan. Now, Robert, who are, who are the Samaritans in, in the Bible when Jesus refers to them? Yeah. So, so that's referring to a region, um, uh, that would be a next door neighbor, to um, kind of the locations where Jesus and the disciples are running around. And those uh, people were looked on as kind of the outsiders and maybe more importantly um, that there's evidence that these people were considered unclean because they were outside of um, the the, the Jewish uh, law. And so um, when you say, when you say, you know, the priests walked around him or, you know, kind of like our modern day uh, uh, um, uh, pastor, that, that, that priest w- was keeping, uh, you know, what we would refer to now as kosher law. So, so we can't, you can't touch that person because that person is unclean. And so, so that example is pretty, pretty specific. People who were there considered unclean just because they were outsiders. So yeah, that's that's who Samaria. Sam, uh, that's where so that's what Samaria is. It's basically a it's a it's a region that's just a bit um bit outside of wh- where they were in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, we've uh we've joked before that uh, that's it's like a the ASU Arizona State University of Arizona uh, rivalry. That's you know prob- but probably more serious, probably a little more life and death. Um, than than just a good old fashioned you know, sports <laughs> or, or college rivalry, but you know, sort of think of um, think of it in those terms. So mm-hmm. so for um, the Samaritan to come by and and what he does is he helps the man out of the ditch and he helps him clean and bandage his wounds and he takes him to a local inn, gives the innkeeper some money and says, hey, take care of this guy until he gets better. Um, and that's that's sort of really shocking if you're back in that time and that context and you're reading like how could this guy possibly be the hero of the story how could this as you said unclean man be the guy who helps helps out the the person on on the side of the road um and uh jesus says you know then kind of goes back to that question so so like who is my neighbor who is a neighbor um he says and then he returns again with the question like um you know, to these guys, you know, who do you guys think the neighbor was in the story? And of course they say, well, well, it's the Samaritan. So that was pr- pretty radical um, for him to say that, that yes, even your, your mortal enemy in a sense is your neighbor or is capable of being a neighbor. So when we think of people who aren't like us and, 
and think like, oh, those people who aren't like us aren't so different from us. They're bad. They're evil. They couldn't possibly do good um, in the world. They couldn't possibly have that goodness that's inside of us because we're better, right? Um, and Jesus turns that completely on on its head and says, no, not only are your neighbors the people you know, the people you care about, the people who were um, part of, you know, your quote unquote tribe, um, everyone's your neighbor. And um, we're called to be a neighbor uh, no matter what. So um, I've always thought that's a pretty powerful um, and, and pretty radical in a good way uh, story um, and teaching uh, in, in the Bible and has been, been pretty core to my faith. But, you know, that's, we, we struggle with that because that's really hard to wrap our minds around. So keeping this definition of neighbor in mind, uh, Robert, how is your, your own faith uh, shaped your relationship with your neighbors? Yeah, I think the point, um, I think the point, one of the, I think one of the first points for me to remember is that the, the story that Jesus tells is there for a reason that it's that our natural inclination is to judge somebody just by the way that they look or maybe by the way that they act um that that by judging a book by its cover that's actually natural and so for us to say hey okay so it's okay that that's my first reaction and to acknowledge that and then to say okay so but now it's time to read the book now it's time to um, be open to what this person has to say and i need to um walk through uh um, walk through that little bit of an internal journey when i'm talking to somebody who uh, isn't like me or maybe uh, doesn't believe the same way that i believe or and for me i know i know that that when somebody is um uh, you know very angry and i feel like is very judgmental or somebody who is has made a lot of assumptions and is acting on um you know maybe on hate or something like that to me that's where I start to really, when I go, okay, I got to give this person, um, I got to give this person space to, under, to understand, hey, where is this, where is this person? And um, how can I, you know, and how can I um, to not be the one to fully judge them? So. Where, when is it the hardest? When is it the most challenging to, you know, on paper, it's, it's easy to be like, oh, okay, yeah, I can, I can give somebody a chance that I might not normally um, give a chance or not see as my neighbor. But if I'm really pushing myself, um, mm -hmm. where does it get really hard um, to, mm -hmm. to still say, to kind of even grit your teeth and say, uh, yeah, you're my neighbor too. Yeah, I think, I, yeah. And I think that, and I think sometimes I think the point of this story is it, it's, it's not necessarily that, um, that you need to be able be accepting of a hundred percent of uh, of everybody. If somebody is being um, hateful, or if somebody is breaking the law, if some, you know there's that there's certain boundaries that you still need to have have in place. Um, but then I think I think the key though is to be able to make sure that you have compassion um, on, on everybody equally. Um, that 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 compassion to be able to say hey that person in their system is doing what they think they what they think is right yeah. but to be able to have compassion and to be able to walk around the news for a little bit and say okay um you know I, I i don't agree but i understand yeah i i think i've i've come to see it as whether or not i agree with you or um i uh, think what you're doing is right or wrong it's the ability to see the humanity in everybody see that like no matter what we're all still human and if we can start there then maybe we can uh, work to have uh, better relationships ultimately leading to that love uh, for for one another uh, knowing that mm -hmm. that's a really really hard thing to do and a really really hard journey um, sometimes so yeah, yeah. thanks yeah so, um, you know, I know a lot of folks are probably thinking like, okay, so, so how do I begin that? How do I take, take those steps? Do I have to, you know, <laughs> immediately turn around and that, that person I, I hate or, or don't get along with or, or totally don't agree with and, you know, uh, go 
go say, Hey, I love you, man. Um, mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I think for me, it's always like, there's always one, you know, what's the easiest next small step um, we can do. And I, I joked at the beginning, like, love your neighbor. Does that actually mean love your next door neighbor? Um, yeah, it can. And um, no, don't, don't go over and, you know, give them a hug or say, I love you, man. But um, so many of us, we've been living next door to somebody probably on two sides of us and across the street um, from us for, for most mm -hmm. people. And there's a good chance we don't know one or all of our neighbors, like our literal physical neighbors. And so my challenge for people is usually like, if you don't know the name of the person living next to you, take an opportunity, go knock on the door, introduce yourself, no matter how long that's been or how awkward that might be. If you do know each other's name in passing, maybe it's time to, um, to have a, a deeper conversation. Um, you know, bring over, bring over some bread, bring over a bottle of wine. I don't know what it is. Um, uh, make an invitation to, to have a meal or a conversation uh, together. Um, and I, I think we can do that with our neighbors. We can do that with the coworkers or friends at school, you know, wherever we are, whatever our context is, there, there's always somebody nearby that we can make that first step and connection with. So that's, that's what I would challenge folks to do. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. All right, man. Well, thanks so much. Uh, and uh, if you can, um, uh, if, if uh, you are listening to this podcast and you're wanting to get involved in, in a community, uh, you can uh, go to socialthread.org and uh, click get involved and you will be um, uh, hanging around with people who are just like you trying to figure this, uh, what this out, what this means and how to live this in your daily life. Um, if you're connected, maybe you're outside the Phoenix area, but uh, you still want to stay connected um, and uh, support what's going on, you can, of course, go to socialthread.org forward slash uh, support, and you can uh, get involved that way. Until next time, Rob, thanks so much. It was a good podcast. As always, thank you, my friend. All right. Hey, take Bye. care, everybody.